<laughs> so yeah, he you know, he is a contractor. They want to get into this house. Is that what's going on? Yes, he's not even no money. He want to get together a group of people. I found it. Oh, I'm sorry. Where is it? Can y'all see it? Was it? On your computer? It's on my computer. I have it on YouTube, but I must have been it. Can y'all see it? Yeah. <laughs> but it was something I was kind of doing on the side because I got promotion and I don't know if anyone jumped into management ever but it wasn't for me <laughs> so um I just stepped back down and start you know devoting all my time into my credit repair business this year I got incorporated and I started scaling and getting more clients um the first chart that you see on the first page is just showing the client success as as a far like uh, in April I started off with 16 now in September, I'm at 32 clients. Oh, sweet. And out of all the clients out of those 32, I've deleted 250 uh, derogatory accounts today and um and updated to positive 1,284. And then when they say repaired, it's pretty much like personal information. Uh, if they have their name spelled wrong or something like that, I was able to go in or addresses that were not correct because I know that stuff matters in underwriting. Mm -hmm. Um also when you come down here, it's pretty much the numbers. Uh, 250 deletions. Uh, I sat down and did all the calculations. So over 116,762 in total, the amount that was deleted from those 250. Mm. And on average in points, I get 89 points on average. Mm. So in between a one month and a six month time frame, it's different for every person's situation. It depends on where they start, but those are pretty much my track records. Oh, sweet. Um, how it works will be the next page. So how it works. Um, I pretty much, I have uh, access to credit software. So every client gets their own portal. They get to see everything that's going on. They get email notifications. They send me um, messages via their client portal to stay on track and keep everything uh, you know, accountable on both ends. So that's how they will communicate with me. I have the cost broken down as well. So if any client comes into the situation, they already know what to expect. And majority of people that sign up for my program, they're ready to be there. I always tell them, I do not want y'all, you know, missing meals trying to get your credit repaired. You know, mm -hmm. go ahead and save a little money, money that you would normally spend on eating out. You can, you know, allocate that towards credit repair so you can get to where you want to go. A lot of people, millennials that I know that I grew up to school with, they're all in the process of right now wanting a house. Mm -hmm. And if they're already in a house, they want a rental property. So I know that this service that I provide is very advantageous and it's needed for people because that's what they want now. I mean, yeah. we're all kind of waking up. I think coronavirus, <laughs> you know, got us in a point where we're kind of woke and we want we want to get to that next level and have some, something tangible for our families and our kids. Okay. So that's my main reason that I'm here. Uh, the benefits are transparency, access, and then I also go through everything, every client uh, profile with a fine tooth comb and I do assessments. That's looking at their debt to income ratio, that's looking at um, their credit card utilization. If it's over 30%, giving them a plan of action to get everything down. If they don't have any credit at all, if you guys could join me on the, the last page. This is an example of a client that I took on in July. If you see the date for the first scores, this was July the 16th. By August the 16th, which is just exactly a month later, I had got him these increases because he didn't have any credit. It's a little bit easier for me with my credit building program to give them products and tools and, and a strategy mm -hmm. to get them from no points or low points to higher points 
that they just need credit building and they don't have a lot of derogatory items on their reports. Where the second one, that's me getting things deleted and if they have a, a one day 30 late, being able to send in a no uh, goodwill letter or something of that nature and have them update and take that neg their one late payment off and now their accounts are in the green and it's a good situation for them. As you see on that, it took their score significantly up. Mm -hmm. um, at the top, it was it's not quite home ready up, but it's better than what it was. That's when I would go in with the credit. Think that's not home ready. Or? That's home ready. Oh yeah, that's home ready. What's, Hell, matter of so, fact, they, he was home ready before he even started. <laughs> really? So what are they doing? What's the minimum now? I need to be educated on that. Oh, um, with the five eighty. Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, it really so depends needs, on how much cash. Need some money. You gotta put money down. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll you know, do that. Some will go down to five points. But like just standard 3%, like 620. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's something that I can share with them because um I just always thought it was 640. Yep. I guess when I got my house, that's what they were telling me I need to have. Yeah, yeah. But I've it been fluctuates. in my house for a minute now. It fluctuates. It adjusts. Okay. Thank you for the information. Absolutely. That's something good to know. Oh, thank you. So oh, I have a state, I have something to guys is a actual uh, affiliation. Before, before you talk about the oh, affiliation, we actually have a question for you. Yes. Can you feel a question? Sure, sure, yeah. All right, go ahead. And Erica, is that you? Yes. Because I can't tell Erica. since you want, you want to turn your camera on, you got boomerang and business. I'm like, who's boomerang? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I logged on the, the wrong account. But now, my, you know, when I turn my camera on, my it 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 load puts the load on my I guess internet and it really makes it choppy. So please forgive me. No worries. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, why my yeah. camera is all. Yeah. yeah. All right. Go. The question I have, I I know you you have the sheet in front of you. Um, what is what is your fee? How much does it cost for the credit repair? Yes, ma'am. They, they don't have a fee. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so they will start. That's okay. The enrollment and audit fee will be $159 to start up. And that's just me off the rip, going through their credit report, letting them know what we need to work on, what items need to be deleted. So it's $159, and then it's $99 a month. And they can cancel at any time. I do have a refund policy in place. So if I don't get any deletions, not one deletion, in 120 days, I give them all their money back. That's good. So I, that, that gives them some peace of mind. Like, if this doesn't work out, then you at least get your money back. And I, I honestly wouldn't feel good as a company and my reputation taking someone's money in that way and not being able to give them the outcome. As a credit repair company, I can't make any guarantees, mm -hmm. but I can at least put a refund policy in place to help protect them. Mm -hmm. What was that again? You said after 120 days? Yes, ma'am. 120 days, if, if they get no deletions, then I refund their whole, the whole amount back. All right. So say, uh, Erica. So what she's saying is, is is one hundred and fifty nine dollars to sign up, and then ninety nine dollars a month, and then uh, if after four months no deletions, then she's gonna refund every refund them their money back. Yeah. Thank you for that, cause my it, you know like I said it, it freezes. So um, next question. I'm sorry, I don't want to bombard the presentation. Oh. Next question. <laughs> How do you handle clients? Because I mean, I've come across clients or just people in general that like the microwave credit repair, right? Mm. And they they get they go to these credit, you know, everybody's the new credit repair specialist over the last few years, mm -hmm. um, where they just go in and say like they're gonna wipe everything clean, you know, whether it's you know their debt or not, which um, is the not the best thing because because can't can't that come back on like once? I know everybody knows the rules of the game of if the credit company not respond in 30 days, 45 days, that you know it gotta come off. But can technically that 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 object that financial obligation can appear back on your credit? It is, and that's the most important thing as a as a credit repair company. I make sure I disclose all of that to them in the very beginning. I don't do credit sweeps. Um, I can I can get out of game, but I you know I don't mess with no stuff on nobody how they get their money, but I don't operate like that. People that are doing credits, we good. All right. Forthcoming with the way they're going about doing it, and I I don't operate in it. And I do tell them right off the front, hey, this is this is what to expect. And right now, because of COVID, they actually extended the deadline. It went from thirty to forty five days. They gave them additional fourteen days. So a lot of companies are being able to verify and keep those items on longer because mm -hmm. of these this cushion due to uh, coronavirus. So it makes it a little bit got it. Credit repair companies. 
But I do tell people if they come in and they don't been with Lexington Law, creditrepair.com, and hey, I need my stuff done in a, in, in a month, we're, we're not a good fit. You're not the client for me. Uh, I'm not the company for you. I wish you the best on your endeavors and we'll, we'll keep it moving. I, I'm an advocate of all money is not good money. <laughs> and I, I do want the desired outcome in a person who's committed to taking the steps and following the process and not looking for like what you said, a microwave situation. That's not realistic. Perfect. Right. And I try to educate people on that, but I just wanted to just confirm that because I've heard that before. I mean, I've, you know, I, I do financial education. So, right. So I'm like, and they, a lot of people ask me that, you know, well, you know, what about, I say, yeah, you can go to those credit repair companies, pay them $1,500 up front, $2,000 up front, and they wipe away stuff. But if that was legitimately debt, yeah, it's going to come back. You can go buy a run and buy a car, but it's going to be back on. You sometimes I just want to make sure that that was really accurate. Yes, ma'am, that is accurate. Not only that, if they're still in the statute of limitations, so um, that that debt belongs, it could be sued, right? Yes, they can be sued. And yes, they sued. About the sue. Yeah, if a person gets some in support to to be uh served, and they get sued, then if they don't show up, they'll garnish their wages. So it's it's real. The people if they're dealing with people that don't know what they're doing, and they're just right, right. Now I, I'm from another state. I know in our state. Uh oh. <laughs> um, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, ma'am. I can hear you now. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Have patience. My Zoom don't let me be great. Especially <laughs> 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 the classes that I'm highly interested in. Oh, my word. So, um, I know the state that I come from, the, the statute of limitations was three years. Is it, what, how many years is it in Texas? It's four years in Texas. Four years. Okay. That's good to know. And also, is it also true that if these companies call and say the four years pass and they call and you start, the uh, the client starts negotiating with them and communicating with them, that can start this special period over again. Is that still correct here in Texas? Yes, ma'am. It can start it all over again. If they over again. Okay. Realize. All right. I'm just making sure I'm, all right. Yeah. They'll say like, um, I opened this account in 2015 and they'll think it's seven years from 2015. No, it's seven years from when the last payment no. was on that account. It's from the, if, when the if they get on that payment, phone and start right. making a breach, that you went the link it, it, it starts over from that point. It's seven years all over again. Wow. Yeah. Hey. Yes. <laughs> I have a question. Right. Yes, ma'am. About your payment structure again. So I see my two bullet, bullet points on the restore. Yes, ma'am. Could you explain the difference between the one fifty nine and the ninety nine a month, and then the twenty one ninety nine a month? Okay, I did forget to mention that. Thank you for bringing that up. So the additional cost of the twenty nine twenty one ninety nine a month is a mandatory for the credit monitoring program. Because right now the yeah. we can send in um, challenges, disputes, and a client may not ever get a letter back from the bureau, or maybe one letter out of all the letters that we send in where they'll, they'll respond and show a new updated credit report. They they have that provision due to thanks to coronavirus. So they don't have to send letters out the way they used to. With that credit monitoring in place, it puts me it puts me in a position to stay on top of everything. Everything, every time something gets deleted, every time something gets updated, every time something gets verified, they'll get notification. And when I, I'm able to pull the credit reports over every 30 days to stay on top of it, this is deleted. Oh, I need to go on with a second or third or fourth or a fifth round on this particular thing that hadn't been deleted yet. And that's what that the whole purpose of that. And it's mandatory with my program because for one, they're not sending the letters. And sometimes when they send the letters, the clients won't follow up and do their part to take a picture of the letters, all 11 or 12 pages and send it to me. So it just takes all of that out of it. And that was another question that I had. Where are you sourcing the reports from? Are they going on to the true credit or are they doing that yearly credit and giving it to you and you looking at that? Or are you pulling it yourself? I'm pulling it. They're, they're signing up for the credit monitoring through Identity IQ. That's who I use. They, they do use Vantage score. It's not a FICO score. But from my experience, the I know it's the difference between the FICO and the Vantage score. So FICO is what mortgage companies use. But if I can get their Vantage score up to a certain point, their FICO score is around that ballpark. So that's where I'm pulling, I'm sourcing it from Identity IQ. And it's a Vantage score model. And are you, or do you allow for the Vantage score to be higher than average? Because I know with Vantage score, 
Um, they don't include any like medical bills that's 250 or less. They don't include any um, any debt that you incur from a natural disaster. Sometimes that's why a bandage score can be higher than a FICO score. Mm -hmm. So when you when you're talking to them, do you wait until this score is like high, just say you know 700 when where they FICO might be 660? Mm -hmm. Is that that's how you normally process it? That's where the credit education comes into place. So while we're doing the the repairing and restoring and challenges on the other part while they're doing the credit building. I will tell them, let's say we're three months into the program and they, they've hit, you know, this mark where they're high sixes, mid sixes or 700. I will also send them a link to my FICO, let them know, hey, this score is, is a little bit, you know, the cost is a little bit more than what identity IQ is. But if you want to know your true FICO scores to put you in a position to get in this house, then if I were you, I, I recommend pulling these scores to know where you are. I give them that option and give them the link and the information they need to make sure they're going into the home buying situation with a true FICO score and not a vintage score. Got it. Good question. Um, okay, keep going. Okay, and also the, the second um, is it's just building, building credit. So it's two options to do this, honestly. Um, the, the $99 and $79 a month, it's for people. I have a consultation fee where I just charge a person $49 for 45 minutes to talk to me and ask me whatever questions they want. And I give them all the information they want. They may want to do their own credit repair. I'm, I'm fine with that as long as they get to the, the outcome. You know how the pastors say, you ain't got to come here and get saved, but go to somebody's church. I'm kind of like that in that way. But you might have those people that keep, keep calling. And, you know, I don't, I don't mind if the time is money. And if you're going to be one of these people or if a client is going to be one of these people that are going to constantly call me every other day trying to get more information X, Y, Z, and the third. That's why I have the build in place. Like, hey, initial fee of $99, $79 a month. B during business hours on the five, Monday through Friday, you can call me as much as you want to. Mm. Those are for people that take advantage of the right. information. Like, so they just want the info. Yeah, they just want the info. So what a, uh, So what's the additional cost for twenty one ninety nine? Did you mention what that is? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be for the credit monitoring. Oh, well, uh, I did for right identity IQ. IQ. Yes. Sir. All right, and then um, did you, you guys want to move to affiliation benefits? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So I think we're ready. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it puts the of course uh, it puts the client in a position to purchase a home. Which puts realtors in a position to, you know, go find a house and be able to close and get the commission. You know, it, it, I feel like it's a hand in hand situation. I know you guys could use anyone, but I'm really trying to solidify myself and build partnerships with companies. And then when I read y'all's website that y'all were black owned, <laughs> and I'm like, man, that, that's amazing. And I just so happened to run into, Jessica. yes, I, like literally, she was like, I'm getting, um, you know, business cards for realtors. I was like, Hold up, girl. Let me, you know, hold up one minute. So I got really excited about that. I don't, I don't believe in half and chance, even if it's just a, even if I leave this meeting and it's just the fact that you guys know about my company and I know about your company, I've, I've done what I needed to do here. Absolutely. But if we could build a partnership, that would even be a better situation. Absolutely. And um, like I said, with the, the consent of your client, if your, if your client consents, I would even be able to share. I would most definitely send them something that they can write down that we can have on file for them that they consented that I could share. So if you send a client away, I could share the progress with your realtor, uh, if that's okay with you. But yeah. I would have to get their consent first. So yeah. that's, that's something. Um, and then I also have an affiliate portal. So um, you will have your own portal, whoever will have their own portal and they, hey, I got somebody that can uh, help you with your credit situation, can input their information and get sent to me. And that person is gonna be tracked under that realtor. So I'll be able to know who sent who, you know? And um, it says, agreement not to poach. So mm -hmm. you're not going to send a client my way and I'm going to hand them off to Joe Blow's real estate yeah. company. Yeah. That's bad business. So anybody you send my way and I get them to where they need to go, where they're at the goal point, I'm going to send them right back to the person. It's only good ethics. Absolutely. It's even better that you put it in there. I yeah. people always had a little elephant in the room. Nobody was talking about, mm -hmm. I need to ask you, are you going to do with my client? Yes, <laughs> ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma no, we can uh, sign a no compete, not, not whatever agreement y'all want to sign. Because at the end of the day, it, it's helping my business as far as um monetizing it and 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 
you know, giving me a steady stream of clients. And then in turn, I can, you know, most definitely get them back so that they can finish the last leg of the race. Absolutely. Okay. That's yes, ma'am. So at the moment, you said you have like 32 clients. Yes, ma'am. Are you doing all the work yourself or do you have partners? I have me and then I have my 19-year-old daughter. Okay. So I'm I'm, I'm getting her on in here. Mm -hmm. She's actually getting ready to go to Wellesley in Boston. Okay. But I'm just... I'm, I, I do have her deal with me every step of the way that if anything, you know, Lord forbid ever happened where I'm out of commission, she can step in and do it. And then by it being a computer-based situation, most of my consultations are over the phone, Zoom link on the computer. It's only like, um, you know, like the baby boomers, the older um, people that I may sign up, that they're like, no, I want to see your face. What do we mean at Starbucks? I'm like, okay, well, I'll pull up at Starbucks. But for the most part, it's online. So she can pretty much deal with the caseload anywhere. I have everything secured. Um, that's why I really stress the issue of people sending me a message on their client portal because it's also encrypted. I don't accept any documents via email, anything that could be compromised. Do you do or participate in, say, home buying seminars and things like that when you come out and present? I would love to do that. I know they have... Um, what was the name of the one in Houston? Uh, if I wasn't trying to think of it right now, I would know it. The one y'all went to? The one? Oh, that was for builders. Uh, maybe the Black Expo. It's going to come to me before before we leave here today. It wasn't the Urban. The Urban League or it's a it's an acronym, but I think it stands for Urban Houston League. Area Urban League. Houston Area Ur Urban League. Houston Area Urban League. That's the name of it. I know I participated in some of their home buying programs, but I have spoken at schools before. I've spoken at KIPP. I actually have an, um, a, a speaking engagement with them via Zoom Saturday, this uh, upcoming. And I also spoke at Sterling um, High School when they had their back to school drive here okay. recently as well. I do try to get out in the community. And I, I will, I may not be the smartest, but I'll pop up on kids. Over there, word in, be like, y'all know about credit. <laughs> they'll be like, oh, we, 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 you know, we, we didn't know who was pulling up. I'm like, hey, it's very important because when y'all get in college, they're gonna throw all kind of student loans and access to all this ridiculous amount of debt you're in inheriting. You need to know how it works. So I honestly do give out my card and number. Like, hey, feel free to call me if you guys have any questions. I hadn't got a call yet, but maybe one of them will call one day. <laughs> Trying to get them ready before it hits them. Well, that's pretty much all I have, guys. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity. I appreciate no, definitely, definitely. the, the, the alley oops. I really do. Uh, absolutely. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. We're going to add you. You know, you, you family now. So we're going <laughs> to add you into our private Facebook group. And you know, there are other opportunities for you to engage uh, with, the, with the agents. I, I, I'd encourage you to take advantage of it. Like, engage with it. Because, yeah. you know, this is just a small... Uh, a small amount of the amount of agents that we have in our reach. So uh, this should be a good platform for you. Thank you so much. Like five more, please. Sure, sure. sure. And does anybody on Zoom have any questions? Um, not, I don't have any more questions, but just leave a call for me. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, leave, yeah, leave, leave some. Stack. Yeah, leave a stack of calls. Okay, we'll do. Do you have business cards or you just had these? No, I also have business cards. All right, let me stack your business cards so we can put them up front. Will do. I'm going to have to run down and get them. I don't know That's why. That's okay. And you, got, and you got to eat a sandwich with us. You got to eat a sandwich with us. Well, thank you guys so much. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. You, you right. seem very passionate about what you do. Right, and I like that part about it is that you care. If y'all really um, I probably like care too much sometimes. <laughs> but thank you so much. All right, so we're done with Zoom. If y'all don't have any questions, we're going to go eat these good sandwiches that y'all missing out on. Mm, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> yes. All right. You want to get the car? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk to y'all later. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Can you take your, your report? Bye-bye. I don't know how.